The 2008 recession was the biggest recession that the US faced since the Great Depression. It brought extreme panic and destruction to the US economy. But why did it happen? How did such a huge recession happen so suddenly? Well, that's the question we're exploring today. Welcome to the 2008 recession explained with Minecraft. To begin, the 2008 recession was a direct result of the housing crisis that occurred in America, and it can give us context needed to understand the recession. So the recession truly started with houses, and with a little thing called mortgages. A mortgage is a special type of loan that you put on houses. The idea is that a bank gives you enough money to buy the house, and then while you live in that house, you pay off the loans. So, if Mr. Villager here wants to buy a house that costs 500 emeralds, the bank would give him 500 emeralds and then he would have to pay those emeralds back while he lives in that house. Now remember, the bank still needs to be compensated in some way, and this is done through an interest rate. And because of this, the villager will actually pay more than 500 emeralds in the end. Now the mortgage alone wasn't the reason that the entire housing market collapsed. The reason it happened was rooted in something called an investment bank. Now investment banks are a bit different from banks that you might be familiar with. It's not like a bank that Mr. Villager can just deposit his funds into. Instead, they help companies raise funds and capital by investing in certain things. One of those things they can invest in is mortgages. Say that an investor called Zero comes to the investment bank looking for a mortgage investment. Now the investment bank won't just sell one mortgage to Zero. It instead bundles a bunch of these mortgages, which includes Mr. Villager's house, under one mortgage package. They then sell it to zero for a higher amount than the actual value of the mortgages. That way the bank can still make a profit from this. What does zero get in return? Huh? Well remember the interest rates that I was talking about earlier? Well those extra emeralds that the villagers pay the bank now have to go to zero instead. So zero gets profit from the interest rates. So this bundling system begs the question, what if someone within the bundle doesn't pay their loan back? What if they can't afford it? Well, this reveals a huge advantage that mortgages had for investors. If Mr. Villager was unable to finish paying his mortgage, the bank could simply just take his house away and resell it. The value of the house was their safety net, a very clear fallback just in case the plan didn't work out. So it made the investment a very safe one with clear returns. Now this fact combined with the added bonus that the housing market was actually booming in the early 2000s, meant that investors were lined up to buy these mortgage packages. Tons of people wanted a piece of the seemingly indestructible pie. So much so that investment banks were actually making an insane amount of money from these mortgages. Now with this investment system, normal banks had a lot of incentive to just give out as many mortgages as possible, because the risk of the mortgage would be just handed off to the investor. They earned money at basically no risk. However, as the banks gave out tons and tons of mortgages, they eventually ran out of people to give it to. The villagers were full of houses that were being mortgaged and there were just less villagers to give it to. So banks began to rely more on subprime mortgages, or mortgages that had a lower credit threshold. Basically, instead of giving it to villagers with a good history of paying back loans, they also gave mortgages to people like Mr. Zombie and this nitwit here, people that had a worse history of paying loans. Now this meant that these mortgages were much riskier for the banks. But that was the thing, they didn't really care how the mortgage went because they would just sell it off to the endless line of investors there were. So this would create a housing bubble, where these mortgage packages would become riskier and riskier yet still be packaged like it was a good deal with no risk. A bubble would form very rapidly, with rising house prices and easy mortgage access like never before. Say you were a random villager during this time. You could literally have an insanely nice house for a seemingly really good deal, and you didn't even need to have good credit history. Who wouldn't want that? However, as the years went on, the bubble began to weaken, and eventually, as we all know, it popped. This pop would happen because these villagers that the subprime mortgages were sold to, well, they couldn't pay the loan back. I mean, on paper, it seems really obvious. The villagers that the subprime mortgages were sold to didn't nearly have enough money to buy the house, so they would have to default the loan, or in other words, give the loan up. So what happens when someone can't pay the loan? Well, the fallback plan I talked about earlier. The bank would repossess the house and sell it after to someone else. 
However, with so many subprime mortgages being sold out, suddenly thousands and thousands of people started defaulting on their loans, since so many of these people were nowhere near the potential to pay for the house. So imagine a ton of villager houses being repossessed by the banks and sold to the market. A huge influx of houses were being sold and therefore the price of each house would tank. That was when the housing crisis would begin. Banks started taking back tons and tons of these villager houses that they couldn't even sell off. This meant that widespread bank failures would ensue and as you know the 2008 recession would begin. Now this is only one angle of the recession and I haven't covered nearly the full story. Insurance policies and predatory loans are two of the big ones that are really left out. However, the story and the lessons are still clear. A tale of greed and lack of accountability which inflated and eventually burst the bubble. A deadly cycle of handing off mortgages and packaging them to others meant that accountability was completely avoided. Banks were the middlemen that basically thought they found an emerald dupe glitch, and they exploited it to its full potential. At the end of the day, it's clear how greed can take over anyone's rational thoughts, even people with the most money in the world. Thank you for watching.